Do you really have to spend big bucks in order to keep yourself covered while out on the ice fishing? We're gonna find out on Fish It First next. Welcome back to Fish It First, the channel where you can trust the product reviews because we aren't sponsored by the manufacturers. It seems like hub shelters are getting more and more expensive, but you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to be able to get yourself covered while out ice fishing. Now this field and stream two-man hub shelter comes in for about $130, but you can find it places for under a hundred bucks. Now it's pretty bare bones. It's not insulated. It only has one door. It's quite small, but it does have four windows. It's got two tie downs. It has 10 ice screws so you're able to put a screw in each corner a screw in both of the tie downs and then it actually comes with two extra screws in case any get lost on the inside the interior is black which helps with control of light and one thing i really like about this particular hub shelter is the portability factor most hub shelters that are larger you're having to put those in some kind of utility sled in order to be able to bring them out to your spot this you can wrap up put it in a bag throw it on your back hop on the sled and away you you go that is a pretty cool feature welcome inside uh, a quick reminder that this is not an insulated portable and intended for warmer weathers is that i can see where a lot of the stitching is there's a lot of light coming in through so not one that you're going to want in sub-zero temperatures that's for sure it's pretty tight in here i think one person could fish fairly comfortably although with the height in here um you know i'm 5'10 if i stand up which i'll do right now my head does hit the roof here and I feel like if I had a longer rod, you know, 36 inches or longer and I'm trying to do a real solid hook set or fight a bigger fish, you may be striking the top of this portable. One thing I've noticed here that I really like is that these windows, these plastic windows, they actually are uh, replaceable. They have the Velcro all the way around. You can just tear them off, take them out. If one of them gets damaged or ripped, torn, you could just buy another one and put it in there. Not all fish houses have that. We recently took a look at a clam fish house that doesn't have that so if it gets torn I don't know what you do these removable windows are great for when it's hot like today when it's 36 degrees this pop-up has the standard vents uh, on two sides so that if you're running a heater inside you don't have to worry about anything there one thing it is lacking is storage space it comes with one mesh pocket that is about I'm looking at it now it's about Oh, I don't know, maybe eight inches by 10 inches. And another thing I've noticed inside of this fish house, and I haven't figured it out yet, if you know what these are for, let me know down in the comments below. But in all four corners of this fish house, there are these weird straps, they're like 10 inch straps. I don't know what the heck they're for. I haven't figured it out. Let me know down in the comments section if you know what in the world these things are used for. So if you're gonna do this as a two person operation, the best way to do it is with one person here with their back up against the wall, the other person across over there with their back up against the wall. Drill your holes here in front of you. That way you'll be able to get a little bit of space However, presuming that you have two lines, you've got eight inch holes, you're not going to be able to run any lures, your, your airplane jigs, your rip and wrap slab wraps, jig and wraps, those type of diving and darting lures, you're not going to be able to run those because you'll obviously tangle your lines. But if you do it this way, you should be able to get two eight inch holes here two eight inch holes in front of the other person who's fishing with you. Uh, but again, you're not gonna be able to get a heating source in here in that situation. This isn't meant for cold weather anyway, so not a big deal, but you just have to know that. And if you're doing this as a one man fishing operation, I found that the best way to do it is to have your back in one of the corners, your heating source in the far corner. And here in Minnesota, we get to run two lines. So drill a couple of holes right in front of the knees here, and that'll even leave you with some room for some storage for some of your gear in the side corners. Welcome back to the studio. So in closing, do not write off the Field & Stream two-man hub just because of its price. There are actually some features that it has that are better than some of the bigger brands hubs that are out there. We talked earlier about how it has the tear-out windows that some clam models don't even have. That's a great feature. Also comparing it to clam, we've had a clam hub already that came with these really, really weak, small spikes. This one comes with a big hefty spikes that you would expect out of something like an Eskimo hub. That's a great feature. Who is this for? I think it's for somebody who's on more of a college budget and they're in warmer climates. Those of you that are up on Lake of the Woods where we are here and you're gonna be out fishing when it is 10 below, stay away from this hub but if you can use a hub that's not insulated this can be a great option for you guys if you like videos like this and you want to see more product reviews where we are not beholden to the manufacturers 
because we aren't sponsored by them. Let us know down in the comments below what you want to see reviewed next. Be sure to hit the little subscription button down there and the little bell notification next to it while you're down there. And that makes sure that you get all the latest videos from us here at Fish It First. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for all that you do. And until next time, tight lines.